Hey, it's Mark. Episode of Marquetta Breslin Live. So tonight we have another special guest and I'm so excited. I met James at one of my one day Laceway boot camps in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is kind of where I'm from, but not really. I'm really from Bun, but nobody knows where Bun is, which is about 35, 40 minutes from Raleigh. And so I was home visiting my family and decided to have a one day lace wig boot camp. Uh, this was a few years back, like 2017, 2018, something like that. And I met James and he was absolutely amazing. And he is my special guest on tonight. And I cannot wait, but you already know the drill. Do me a favor, two things. Number one, like this video right now. Go and hit that like button wherever you're watching. The second thing, share this video. These stories from my students have been so inspiring. So I want you to like and share. All right, I'll be right back right after this. If you want to broke your business, we will show you how to get it up, get it up. We making deposits yeah. to help you start making deposits. Yeah. We building a team full of winners from novice beginners to moguls with profits. And moguls, that's profits. Yeah. Steady for greatness, we strive. Yeah. We dropping them gems over here. Yeah. Tune yeah. into my quarter, we live. Yeah. All right, I'm back with another episode as I said earlier, of Marquetta Breslin live. And I'm, I'm really excited for, um, for this interview tonight because James talks about something that I haven't had a special guest talk about yet, I don't think, which is lace wig repairs. And so he has created an incredible business doing lace wig repairs, and I cannot wait for you to get in on this interview. But first, let me lay out a couple of things for you. This is the last chance to enroll in Lacewood University in its current format. It is changing. The format is changing. So there's some things that are going away. The phase two of Lacewood University will not be available anymore. And that is the Lacewood Mentorship Program. After this class closes out, that program will not be available anymore. All right. Also, this will be the last time that I do the three-day Lacewig Immersion and Marketing Boot Camp. That's also going away and not coming back again. All right. So there's a couple things that um, are going away that won't we won't be doing again. And then, of course, at that live event, I always offer my mentorship program. It's called Business Accelerator. And that is the last time I'm going to open that program up as well. So listen, it's time. It is time. It's time for you to hit the ground running in 2023. And there's no better opportunity to do that than to fly right out here to Las Vegas, March 5th through the 7th and attend that three day lace wig virtual Lace wig, not virtual, <laughs> lace wig immersion and marketing boot camp. All right. It's optional if you, when you en uh, enroll in Lace Wig University, you don't have to attend the event, but it is highly recommended. All right. You get lifetime access to all of the virtual content for Lace Wig University. Let me quickly tell you what it entails. It's broken up into four phases, with phase one being the Lace Wig training system where you learn everything you need to know about making lace wigs from scratch. And I am your instructor in phase two, <clears throat> excuse me, that unlocks the lace wig mentorship program, which is a 90 day robust program that you start first with making your wigs from scratch or making a closure piece from scratch. And then you learn about mindset and marketing in the last a uh, portion of that. Then phase three unlocks, which is all of the bonuses. I flew in instructors from all over the world to teach you in their 
um, niche portion of wig making. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and then after that phase four unlocks, which is all of your graduation assets where you can take the test to get your certificate. Um, you'll be able to put the graduation seal on your website and all of those amazing things. All right. Enrollment closes February 15th. Okay at midnight it closes february 15th at midnight so there's not a lot of time left to enroll don't miss out okay do not miss out you can enroll for three one payment of 395 dollars or four payments of 99 dollars or 12 payments of 39 dollars it's a steal i know and i wanted anybody since i know that it's not coming back like this anymore i wanted anybody to be able to enroll in lacewig university and benefit from this business in a box because that's essentially what it is all right so that's it you can just go to lacewiguniversity.com to enroll now let's get into tonight's interview. As I stated before, uh, James is amazing and I cannot wait for you to hear all about his wig repair business. Let's get into the interview right now. All right, everybody, I'm back with another interview with this handsome gentleman next to me by the name of James Jemison. James, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hi, everybody. Again, as Marquetta said, my name is James Jemison, also known as the Wig Tune Up or Wig Tune Up. Um, I am a wig maker. You know, I make wigs from short wigs to long wigs, closures. I haven't done frontals yet, but closures definitely. Um, enclosed wigs, wigs that don't require any lace. Um, and I'm also a wig repairer, which I've learned all of that from Miss Marquetta Breslin. And I utilize that in my business today to be able to satisfy clients that have wig issues from holes to ripped lace to hairline replacements to um, parting issues, all of that. Anything you could probably think of, closure replacements, that kind of thing. That's what I do. That is amazing. So tell me about your journey with uh, in the beauty industry. Um, did you always have a love for the beauty industry or for hair or did it just come like all of a sudden? OK, so in, in all honesty, I used to sit and watch my grandma get dressed from Aww. like from like putting on makeup to doing her hair. I used to sit and watch, watch my aunts get, get ready. <laughs> um, and my mom too. And my mom too. And my mom, um, she was in the military. She used to do hair from braids to sew in. So I used to, and she used to take me and my sister with her. And I would watch her do all of that. I not granted, I didn't know that I had been bit by the hair hair bug until <laughs> my aunt recommended that I go to cosmetology school. And then I had a conversation with my aunt and my mom and they were like, you know, my best hairstylists were men. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> and so <laughs> and the way that it happened, um, I ended up meeting my cosmetology teacher while I was out. Um, I went to the movies and then we, I went to out to eat and she sat next to me. And so that's how I ended up enrolling in cosmetology school. But of course, um, I enrolled in cosmetology school in the state of Virginia. I have since now moved to Alabama. So I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to go about with finishing that. But um, I said all that to say while I was in cosmetology school, I was always looking for what I did not see other people doing so that mm. I could and then make money from that, like being known from in the salon for just that. And I didn't see anybody doing wigs. I saw people doing sew-ins. I saw people doing locks. I saw people doing silk presses. I saw people doing braids. Um, I did not see anybody doing wigs. And then lo and behold, I get on Instagram and I'm scrolling and I see your nails. <laughs> 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 Your red nails ventilating. And I'm like, what is this? And so I clicked. And then it was you ventilating a closure. And I was like, I could do that. You know? <laughs> and so I signed up for the I signed up for the program. This was in 2018. 
Wow. Yeah. yeah, because wait, because the first time I met you, wasn't that in Raleigh? Yeah, at the the one day lace wig. Yep, sure was. And and that story, oh my God. Cause I my car was <laughs> I, oh my, I had hit a pothole like a couple days before in Hampton, Virginia. Okay. And my alignment was just thrown off. And I just was like, I don't have time to like go get this fixed, but I am going to make this one day lace week. <laughs> I am going to go because I had bought the program, but I was like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. So I was like, let me just go ahead and do the event. That way I know I can get the hands on. So that was like my first time actually ventilating was there at the event. But it was really? it was so good. Oh yeah, it was so good to go and like like see you, meet you, and then all the other people that were in the class that I'm still kind of cool with now, like Wigs and stuff, Shanda, I'm still cool with her. Um there are yes. other, uh, other people from the class that I'm still in contact with that I see come across my feed on Instagram that we still like engage with. And then all the host of other people that have gone through the program that I'm cool with too. Like um, Aisha, uh, Martina Giovanni, you know, like yes. a whole bunch of people. Like, so it's opened up like a whole world of like people that engage with each other and then like kind of keep mm -hmm. each other motivated. But yeah, so I I went that I went to the lace the one day lace wig uh, immersion, and then I was like, okay, now I can from the hands on I can look at the program and then be able to correlate what I learned in the hands on with what I'm getting from the actual video footage, and that's mm -hmm. what got me on my journey of doing wigs, like learning because I saw you do make that whole closure and then attach it to a wig that you made on the sewing machine then i was like okay now mm -hmm. i gotta get sewing machine so i can learn how to make a, a whole <laughs> wig so that's what started like that whole journey of like okay i can do this i can be a wig maker you know so yeah let me let me say let me say this i tell people all the time the importance of documentation of documenting what you do so that people can decide whether or not they want to buy a wig from you train for you yada 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 you just shared a story about how you found me on a piece of content that i documented mm -hmm. and then here we are sitting here you drove down to to carolina and you came to a class all from a piece of content that i documented so y'all yeah. Never, ever, ever under, underestimate the power of documentation and posting your content online. But I want to go back and talk mm -hmm. about this cosmetology school situation because yeah. you are so right. Yeah. I just had this conversation with Victor. He was, he was another student that used to be a, a director at a cosmetology school. And we were talking about the wig section in the books that are like this big. It is this small. And, I'm and it's like, just like, it's such a huge part thing, of our industry. Yeah. And I think the only, now that I think about it, I think the only piece of like something wig related that I probably did was probably just like a quick weave. And that just mm -hmm. was like, you know, using bonded glue and gluing webs to a, uh, to a cap. That's probably about the only thing that I kind of learned. And so, like, in my mind, I'm like, I wish there was, like, a bigger. But I understand that's why all of the other things are coming now with, like, like your Lakes with University, um, mm -hmm. other people that go out and teach and travel and that kind of thing. And it's because it's not one of those touched on topics in cosmetology school. It's like really, it's literally just glazed over. And then it's like, okay, well, let's get back to to sanitation. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that and a big, a big part of it too, is that cosmetology school, a lot of cosmetology schools focus on, uh, making sure that you pass state board. So if it's not something that is going to be covered in state board, it's kind of like, oh yeah, you need to learn this, but make sure you know this. 
so that you can pass a board, which I understand. But at the end of the day, the whole point of cosmetology school is to be able to set us up for success in the beauty industry as a whole, not just to pass state board. So I just, I, every time I hear somebody say how um, they didn't learn a lot in cosmetology school about wigs, that sets the foundation for how we roll in the industry. Cosmo, it starts at cosmetology school with, even with Rick, Victor and I also talked about segregation and, and cosmetology mm -hmm. school, but not like, not like uh, knowingly segregating. Like if a white client comes into cosmetology school, you gonna get that white client if you're white or if a black client comes in, that's gonna go to the black student. Like, mm -hmm. that's what I mean by, by segregation. Like it's also, we also need to learn because the foundations are set at cosmetology school. We also need to learn all the things that matter too. Like toppers should be taught in cosmetology school for men that come in that need um, hair pieces. That should be taught as well. It's a lot that needs to be taught at their, at their level. And you're exactly right because there is so little information taught at that level by a licensed professional that is why i decided to go there with lacewood university and put something together to help teach the foundational skills for wig making um and then build everybody can you know do what they want to build on top of that with getting further education but that was just really important to me and something else that you said was which was really good was not that you just wanted to ventilate lace wigs from scratch all day long because that yeah. is the thing that i keep telling people that is just one aspect of this whole realm of possibilities when you learn how to ventilate or when you learn how to make a wig that's just one part of it and then it happens to be a, a part of it that a lot of people really take to heart and if you're not doing putting the needle in this way or whatever then you're wrong or whatever it is no forget right. all that there's so much more that you can be doing there's there's hair patches there's toppers there's repairs like what you do there are so many other things that you can do with this skill once you learn the foundational aspects which is why i love what you do so much because you focus on repair so can you talk yeah. a little bit about why you decided to go in that direction yeah i'm gonna I'm a keep it all the way a hundred <laughs> <laughs> ah, i like where this is going sat, already i sat and i you know did my little foundation for making like a closure and then i was making the closure and then i was like i'm not really getting that far with this and so I had to, I had to understand that for me, I don't want to do that, you know. And and guess what? <laughs> That's totally okay. I tell people, people that hit me up about ventilating and like the the different paths. I tell them, get the foundation down, and then decide what works for you. Wig repairs. I can tell you how I fell into my first wig repair situation. I was in cosmetology school. There was a hairstylist there who overplucked she was trying to define the middle part on a unit and she overplucked it and she knew i had taken um your class to be able to learn how to ventilate and that i could fix it so she was like she showed me the wig she asked me if i could fix it and i was like yeah so i took the wig i repaired it and that prevented her from having to have to go buy another because it was a full it was a closure wig that was made um and she would have had to buy another wig to be able to replace that if she couldn't fix it so that would have been extra money out of her pocket to be able to do that but i came in Ooh. and saved it, and she was able to install that wig on the client and not have to spend the extra money to be able to replace that wig so i tell anybody like there's multiple ways of being able to do it if you can like if you make wigs and those wigs that you sell you want to repair or if you have people that have wigs they bought from other people and they want to send them in to have them repaired or if you just want to link up with a couple 
a hairstylist in your area that deal with lace or deal with wigs in general, you can be their source to be able to help repair wigs that way. So it's multiple ways of being able to do it. You just kind of got to decide what path you want to take to be able to do it. But yeah, not all of us are out here spending 50, 11 hours <laughs> doing wigs. Right. No, no, <laughs> no. And I, I, cause I, I can sympathize with that because that's not my first choice. I don't want to go and ventilate a whole full lace wig from scratch. That's not my first choice to do that. I would much rather do something a little bit shorter and a little bit simpler, but I do have some of my students that will say that that's what they love and that's great. But there's yeah. so many different um, avenues and things that you can do within the wig making world that don't require you to spend hours upon hours ventilating, just like uh, the touch by Toria method, using the nair to nair out the little areas and then going back in to ventilate. That's mm -hmm. another aspect of uh, wig making that you can do, or, or that's another way to use the skill to be able to help service other people. So- right. Um, tell me what your first, um, encounter with the lace wig was like, like <laughs> I, I was reading an article the other day and somebody, somebody was, I, I forget what the article was about, but they were talking about specifically about working with lace wigs and their first encounter with the lace wig was a hot mess, which I, we can probably all we all probably have a story about how that first encounter was crazy, but what was it like the first time you worked with the lace wig? Mm. I think the first time I actually worked with a lace wig, it was probably synthetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that I think about it, it was probably one of my mama's wigs. And I just was like, let me see if I can just do something different with this thing and see if I can either curl it a different way, uh, steam it or something, like just see if I could transform it. It didn't mm -hmm. work out, okay, but in my mind, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be, you know? <laughs> so it didn't pan out that way, but what I learned was I'm a person that's willing to try something, you know, to see what yeah. the outcome, what the transfer transformation could can be. Of course, there are plenty of people that don't deal with human wigs at all that are still um out here either yeah. repairing making wigs or creating some type of creative art with these synthetic wigs i haven't gotten there yet I, but I, mm -hmm. I know um but yeah i think that was probably my first encounter with like a lace wig it was synthetic and i was trying to figure out what i could do different <laughs> with it <laughs> <laughs> Listen, those synthetic wigs, um, they can be difficult to work with, but what people don't realize, so you're probably, I think I'm older than you, so you may not remember this movie, but there was a movie that came out when I was a little girl. I was born in 1980. I think this movie came out in like 83, but it was the movie Splash. And the actress, I believe her name was Daryl Hannah, was wearing a synthetic wig when she had to do, she was a mermaid and she had to go underwater a bunch, but the curl stayed intact under, I never forgot that even from a little girl. And I didn't learn until later on in my adult life that that was a synthetic wig. And the reason why they use a synthetic wig is because it holds its style, some say for life, but it holds its style for an extended period of time. And the way to change um, a style of a synthetic wig is to use steam or heat or, or mild heat or something like that. But there's mm -hmm. so many different, um, there's so many different uh, facts and things to learn about wigs in general, that the possibilities are endless. I always tell people, um, never, ever, ever stop with just one avenue of learning. Always, mm -hmm. always become a forever student and always read books, watch videos, learn from as many different sources as you can, because that's what's going to help build your true, authentic and unique thing that you do. Right. So can you talk about um, how 
your training with lace wigs, how it not only how it started, but how you were able to take what you learned from like the classes and the online training from me and implement those um, strategies into how you have decided to structure your business. Okay. So, um, of course, going back to the beginning, um, I focused on what I didn't see any, what, what somebody was not doing there at the salon. And that's how I discovered mm -hmm. you and then enrolled into the program. And then mm -hmm. I quickly discovered for myself that making those full pieces was not my jam. So I could probably sit and do like, maybe a, a two by six but not like a four by four five by five six by six definitely not a, <laughs> a, a a frontal and definitely not a full lace wig because my my patience is not there yet not down the line maybe but as of right now i'm more about like what can i get done in like three hours or less you know if it's going to take me less time to do it i'd rather do it than if it takes me longer um yeah. but I also um, realized that in discovering that I did not like sitting for that long to be able to do those type of projects, that's what made me think about, okay, well, what what things have I done quickly? So it was like the whole repairs. It was like the situation with um, the hairstylist at Cosmos Hardy School where she overplugged that middle part and I was able to repair it mm -hmm. in a couple of um, what else um and just things that i had been seeing from um that were not being done so i found that a lot of i saw like uh, other wig makers that were doing a lot of the closures and a lot of the you know full lace wig things and making wigs from scratch and i was like well but i have i noticed that a lot of people are buying these wigs and they they don't fit you know what i'm saying so if the, if they don't fit then what is the solution? Okay, well, the solution would be a, a resizing option or to just deconstruct the wig and make it new based off of your measurements. So those were the, the things that I learned from your program that helped me in, in my business because I'm always thinking about, well, once you get the wig, well, what else can happen in that process? And then who wants to spend five or $600 on a wig and then have to spend five six hundred dollars more they I, I think more people will be inclined to spend five six hundred dollars more on a new wig versus um and building their like wig wardrobe and then mm -hmm. having somebody in their back pocket where they can say well if there's any issues with this unit then i know i can go back to this person and say hey i have patch issues or i have a hole i have a rip is this something that you can fix for me? Can you also shampoo it for me? Can you restyle it or can you revamp it for me to where, you know, maybe it's long and I'm, I may want to turn it into a bob and add some color. So those are other aspects of it that I focus on because at the end of the day, if one customer bought one wig for me, then they'll come back and be like, okay, well, if I need to repair, or if I need to revamp, or if I want to change something about this wig, I'll go back if the option is there. So providing options, I feel like that's a, a really big key as well, too. And letting your customers know you have these options available. I love it. I'm writing down notes because I don't want to forget uh, to say this. You said something earlier um, that you, you said what you do is a solution to their problem. And mm -hmm. as business owners, we have to realize that we are professional problem solvers. We get paid for solving problems. So what you created was a solution to a problem that a lot of people have, which boggles my mind as to why more people are not helping out with these repairs. It boggles my <laughs> mind why I don't see more people doing this because everything that you said hits that problem point, that pain point. And as a business owner, you get paid for solving problems. That is the fastest way to making money in your sleep. That's it. Mm -hmm. Period. Point right. blank. And being able to help somebody with a fit that is not right or help somebody not have to throw that piece away because look at what happened with COVID. COVID happened. People what? can get their wigs. And they had to do something. 
it listen, just, it, was, right. it was a lot. They couldn't like everything was shut down. You couldn't get wigs from factories. Factories were not making wigs, and even now that things have opened up, they've the price has skyrocketed. So what does that mean? That means either you're going to have to recycle that piece. So you're going to need somebody like James, or you're going to have to learn how to do it yourself and be able to fix and repair those pieces on your own. Mm -hmm. So what you do and what you're doing, James, is brilliant. I think it's brilliant. Um, there are a lot of people that are able to make wigs, but you don't hear about enough people that's able to service them and fix them. Because yeah. these people, these pieces will last for a long time if they well, are properly serviced. And maintenance. That I, that I think that's the yeah. key because I think, you know, it's just one of those things where you just put it on and go. And it can very much be put it on and go, but when you turn it inside out, what's going on in the inside of that unit? <laughs> you know, it, you have holes that it split it in two, and then next thing you know, you have a whole rip down the middle, and you're thinking, oh, well, I can't savage this, but I literally had a customer sit me a wig that was split in two, and I was able to just, with the whip method, and just, in that, in that, in that um, thread, and whip it back together and she's still been able to hold on to that wig a little bit longer so to me you know and and of course that would i wouldn't say it's a temporary solution but it's one of those things where it's like okay you get a little bit longer longevity out of the unit and the hair was not terrible on that unit it was perfect and mm. eventually uh, the other solution would be okay well we can go for a closure replacement down the line you know so i, I think options is a really big thing that I that I don't see that often, and I'm like, but why not? You know? Yeah, why not? it should be. It should be. So, and I know somebody is watching right now, or they're commenting. I can see it now. Well, how do I get in touch with James? We're gonna get to that in just a second. <laughs> how do I get in touch with James? Can you fix my wig? It's coming, James. It's coming. But before we get to that. Um, right now, Lacewood University enrollment is open only for a few more days. And I'm sure there are people watching right now that were where you're, you were at when you were making the decision to raise your hand and say, you know what, I want to come and get some, some of that training. So what would you say to that person that's on the fence? That's like, mm, I don't know if I want to do this. What would you say to do, them? Do it. Quit playing. <laughs> I, it didn't take it didn't take me long i just was like she doing something i ain't never seen nobody do before and them red nails is just as going and making this and <laughs> this and i was like like because i like i've my whole i think my whole journey has been focused on what i don't see anybody else doing and i hadn't seen anybody do that and i was like this could be a valuable skill that could translate into money and so and that's where my mindset was so i just was like you know what i can i can pay my coin and and, and enroll in this this program knowing that the dividends on the back end are way worth it you know mm -hmm. so and mm -hmm. and that's just if your mindset is there and you know that paying for this program that you're going to be able to get your money's back Plus, enroll. Because I'm telling I've been able to make money off of this, and I will still be able to continue to make money off of this. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the value of the skill. That's it. Amen. Amen. And any advice to anyone um, who is just getting into the wig making um, realm, that's just, just entering into the wig making world, do you have any advice for, for those people? Okay, so I know a lot of people are talking about like it's oversaturated, right? I I hear that a mm -hmm. lot. Saturated. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of wig makers out out there, and just because you do make you do make wigs or you want to make wigs, you don't want to look don't look at them as competition. Look at them mm -hmm. as people to be able to because i when i look at somebody and their content is the bomb i'd be like i need to step my game up because <laughs> their content is <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's it's like it's no hate it's like 
I want to see everybody that ventures into the hair business be able to succeed because I want to succeed, you know? And it may be a situation where you think you may have to enter in and it's just you got to do everything yourself. You may actually can enter in and be a helpmate to somebody else to help mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. too. So whatever that, when you get in the industry, just figure out what you're good at and then expound from there, you know, because I've, I've had a couple of situations where I've helped other wig makers, you know, if they had wigs that needed to be made, I made them, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've had other wig makers to say, reach out and say, hey, I have somebody um, that's looking for a wig repair. Can you help? You know, so I feel like it's when you look at it from that aspect of you build a community, you build a network of people that you can help each other out when you need it and or you serve a, sp a specific need, um, mm -hmm. then that sets you apart. But you, you got to figure out what that is. And the best way to be able to do that is you got to go in with both feet. You just can't be half in, half out. You got to go in with both feet. And then over time, you will decide, like I have, you know, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, and then and what will set you apart in the industry so you can make your mark on it. I love it. I love it. And you said something um, that I really love with it being oversaturated, but yet it doesn't matter. I tell people all the time, this is what I say. It doesn't matter how many people are doing the thing that you want to do because you're not doing it. Right. You're not doing it. And, you're, and, it, and if you are called to do a certain thing, room will be made for you. Room is already there. It's It's there already. It's right. just waiting for you to say yes. And, and, and just because other people are doing something that means absolutely nothing because the people that are for you are for you. And the people that are for them are for them. Everybody is not going to connect with James or everybody's not going to connect with Marquetta. Everybody's not going to connect with everybody. There's yeah. specific people that you will connect with that you will want to buy a wig from or that you're going to want to learn from or whatever that thing is. So don't use the excuse that this is oversaturated. So, yeah, there may be a little people, a lot of people doing it. But guess what? Just because you see somebody posting about something that they're doing on social media does not mean they're successful at it. Exactly. It doesn't right. mean that. Right. You know, and it doesn't mean that. But go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to also say the the other piece to this is it really is trial and error. You know, mm. don't mm -hmm. think that the, or the so-called fails are setbacks. They're more so life lessons or lessons that you need to learn to get you to the next level. As long as you learn the lesson and don't repeat it, you're good. Mm. Yes. Yes. And there's enough out there for everybody. I'm with you, James. I want everybody to eat. I want everybody okay. to eat. And if you go down the bread, yes. down the bread aisle down at whatever your local grocery store is, <laughs> it's a bunch of bread mm -hmm. on that. But guess what? Somebody buying them. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody it's a whole them. bunch of bread. It's different cereal. It's different eggs. It's all different flavors yeah. and kinds and price points and everything. Why do we need to be in competition with each other? No matter what part of the wig industry you're in, whether you're making wigs, teaching wigs, uh, making closures, doing repairs, it's enough out there for everybody. There's no reason to hate. There's no reason to uh, to talk against somebody. You just do your thing because the moment you take your eyes off of your lane and want to go focus on what somebody else is doing, guess what? You've just left the people behind that needed you for you to stay in your lane. So listen, stay focused, do what you do and allow the chips to fall where they may for you. So mm -hmm. James, how can everybody find you? If somebody wants a wig repair, they want a wig spa service, they want to reach out to you. How can they do that? So the best way y'all can find me is on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I am over on Facebook, but I'm more so on Instagram more than anything, um, which is uh, Wig Tune Up. Um, you can visit my website, which is wigtuneup.com. You can email me, which is help at wigtuneup.com. You can also send me a DM. I'm not one of those people where they'd be like, no DMs, no. 
if I <laughs> you DM me, I am going to reply because that's just how I am. Um, and so, and right now we have we're doing with we're doing we repair consultations. So that's up on the website. Okay. Um, if you have any inquiries about wigs or anything like that, um, if you don't see anything on the website, you know, just send us an email, DM. Or a chat on the website too, because there's a chat feature there too as well. So I love it. Thank you so much, James, for taking the time out of your day to to hang out and inspire those that are watching. I so appreciate you. You are welcome. And thank you for having me on. Like I this was totally random. I was expecting this, but I am happy I did it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And enjoy. I hope to see you in Vegas. Okay. Now that's the plan. Okay. Cause I'm in my mind, I'm calculating to make this happen so I can get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you. And I so appreciate you. All right. That was absolutely incredible. And if you're still here, Shout out to you. You know, something that I forgot to do at the beginning of this video was give a shout out to all of the Inner Circle members that are tuned in right now. Listen, let me say this before I go. The Inner Circle is getting a major upgrade. It's getting a major update. And you do not want to miss it. It is a literal game changer. So... If you haven't already, go to marquettabreslin.com slash join to join the inner circle. You might see a different name when you go there, but it's okay. Uh, that's all coming. All that announcement is coming actually next week. But if you are already in the inner circle, you will be privy to that announcement tomorrow when we have our private live. I will break down everything for you. You're going to be excited. It's going to be amazing. It is going to change the trajectory of your business and your personal life. Watch what I say. I cannot wait. All right. So thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. Remember Lace Wig University is still open for enrollment. You can enroll at lacewiguniversity.com. God bless. And I'll talk to you soon.